it going, everyone? Welcome back to another special edition of the Super Saiyan Godcast. I'm Buddy, the Beast Mode Bruiser. We got Orange Dynamite Jared and Midnight Miles Max on the fucking show. And our goal is to make this podcast not as long as the film itself. Facts. So how's it going, bros? What's up? We're here for another... Jared, I feel incredibly bad for you that we finally watched this film because it's been such a large part of your identity the past year or so. Facts. Just constantly talking about going to see the film and it finally happened. How are you feeling? It was good. It's a good movie. <laughs> Podcast <laughs> over. There we go. It hasn't, it, hasn't, it hasn't been my life forever, but I mean, just like... Yeah, I've been talking about it because I'm a real Dragon Ball fan. And so I was like, you know, dra a new Dragon Ball movie's coming out soon, guys. And when a trailer drops for fucking anything Dragon Ball, I'm going to be like, you know, hey, guys, check this out because I thought you guys liked Dragon Ball. But I, apparently I get made fun of for sharing Dragon Ball related uh, news. So I won't do it anymore. I never said that. <laughs> Buddy's been teasing me about it forever. Like. It's been it's been no secret, you know. I've just been I've been into this shit my whole life. So well, I know we missed you over here. Nobody playing. nobody said anything when the Rurouni Catch It teaser trailer dropped, and I was instantly like, "Well, I wasn't instantly, but as soon as I found out about it, I put it into the chat." And you can bet your ass the next time a Rurouni Catch It teaser trailer drops, it's going to be in the chat as well. I actually need to watch the trailer still, so I'm not going to lie it's, to you. It's literally nothing. It's it's Kenshin drawing his sword and it says like coming soon or something like that might still get me hard i don't know man that sounds pretty good to be honest <laughs> what do you think i mean about it does that, sound buddy? pretty i mean yeah. jared and i were talking about it the other day in the car how we were excited for it and hopefully it sees the light of day so it instead of getting no updates about it ever <laughs> yeah it was that teaser trailer was like the announcement and then that was like in December of last year. So it's almost been a year with no news since that teaser trailer. Unfortunately, we only know the studio that's supposed to be doing it. And uh, they're not the best animation studio, but they're definitely not the worst. They're just kind of mid. And so that's all I need. If, if the story's good, if the story's good and you have a good time and Kenshin kicks ass, you'll, you'll love it. I mean, sure, I would like for them to be like the same studio as Demon Slayer doing the new Rurouni Kenshin anime. Nice but I, try. But I knew that wasn't going to happen. So, you know, whatever. I'll take what I can get. That looks good. So what's up, Miles? How are you feeling? I'm feeling what do good. you think of the film? Because all of us have our letterbox scores displayed prominently. Oh, mine is. On the home I did not see your rating for it. I rated it really high, so I'm surprised that I haven't got ripped into you. I don't think I noticed your rating of it. Okay. Huh, ripped it. Literally everyone gave it a high Literally score. Literally all of us gave it a high score. I don't know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, good. Well, I feel like I gave it like a, a little bit higher score than I even thought I would, but I just enjoyed it so much. It, it doesn't get much higher than like what me and Joel gave it and and Buddy gave it a little bit lower than us, but you know I gave it, it a I gave it a four and a half star in Letterbox, and that's, that's high for me to throw one out of out, of, out there. That's like that. literally what me and Joel gave it, and Buddy gave it four. Emily gave it three and a half. Maisie gave it five, even though she can't officially. Well, she could, but she never uses her Letterbox. Okay. There well, you go. There's our scores for the new Dragon Ball Super it's, Superhero. It's a, it's a Thanks for it's listening, great. guys. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs> we'll see you in October. Fuck off. Uh, no, I mean, I thought um, everyone knows, and I might get shit for this, but I, I know how much all of us love Piccolo, but I love Piccolo and Gohan. I like Piccolo and Gohan's story. And this was kind of Piccolo being like, God damn, Gohan, you haven't trained in forever. What if we needed you? I like the humor in it. Um, humor was great. Humor was, it was great. Classic, like early Dragon Ball humor, which I, I appreciate. I, I mean, it, Toriyama did the script and everything. So, yeah, I really think it was the were... same thing with with Broly. And like I said, when we were leaving the theater, I wouldn't mind if if they just continued the Dragon Ball story, literally just putting just doing a movie every two years. Because like when they put out the movies, it's always a script written by Toriyama that they right. have to adapt instead of like the bullet points and basic outline 
that he draws up for the manga and the anime and then you get that and like the anime is kind of good the manga is like uh, they, there's a lot of things in the manga that make me mad but anytime that it's a dragon ball movie toriyama writing the script it always comes out like really fucking good people say toriyama's lost his touch but when when this man writes a fucking movie it you the difference in quality is noticeable it's not just the animation but like the story and the comedy is always better i mean it's pretty much universally recognized that the dragon ball super anime isn't that great like it's good but it's nothing crazy damn i think i like but, this i think i like super more than both you guys than the anime because i love super the anime personally and i think super super like it's a super super funny but it is i i really like super in general but what i was I saying like is super, like i the like films, super and like ever it's like universally recognized that all the films like resurrection f not as much but all the other films that have come out like recently are like universally like praised oh yeah they're praised i thought you weren't i wasn't sure what you're saying but yeah uh uh the films are great i mean they actually feel the thing is like with these that have come out they feel like feature films they don't feel like something like world's strongest or tree of might that feels like just like a, a tv special you know what i mean like it feels like a theatrical release I think the thing is that it feels like Dragon Ball, where sometimes like the yeah. Dragon Ball Super anime and definitely the Dragon Ball Super manga, sometimes it just doesn't feel like Dragon Ball. Sometimes it really feels just like a cra- cash grab with it. And I know these movies are, you know what I mean? The only reason this shit's coming out is because it makes money. Um, and Toriyama wrapped the series up a long time ago. But when he does it, he still can tap into that Dragon Ball feeling. And like, even with all the new characters and new forms and ass pool fucking <laughs> things, the way the characters are interacting with each other and, and the, and the comedy and the, just the way the, the shit plays out, it feels, I feel like I'm actually watching Dragon Ball Z again sometimes. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Like 100%. I would put these movies right up there with Dragon Ball Z, not as good, but I would put them up there with it. Whereas Dragon Ball Super, like sometimes you need to go back and watch Dragon Ball Z to really realize it. But you watch Dragon Ball Super for a while and then you go watch, go back and watch some Dragon Ball Z, Saiyan Saga, Cell Saga, any of that shit. And you'll be like, God damn, damn, <laughs> damn. damn. they really did this a lot better back then. <laughs> like, I love Z, but I love, man, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm a bigger watch supermarket Z. than more people. I, I Obviously, I've watched. I love, I love, I love Super. I, I like, I really like Super, and I'm a stand for Super. It's definitely better than GT. Um, yeah, yeah. But there's parts of Super that are really just like, hey, this is mindless fan service. You know what I mean? Like, we just gave this guy a new form because you know, whatever. It's just gonna get the. It's really just like I don't know. It just felt like Z had a lot more substance. Like really, yeah. like watch Super and then watch Z and like the difference in like quality of like storytelling because obviously the animation is it more advanced now and everything. But like at times, at times, yeah, I still think that like Z at its like highest peak looks better than Super the series at its high, highest peak. I I can't I don't know if I could say Z at its highest looks better than Vegeta versus Broly in the Broly movie because that was like well no I mean that's the best animation they've ever done like uh that that for initial fight with Vegeta versus Broly that shit is fucking beautiful that looked so yeah. good um I will say this because I was critical of the animation like going into this i think for the story that they were trying to tell the animation actually worked very well yes like the whole comic book like superhero theme that it had going like you even saw like the words come up like when they like punch it and said like bam and like stuff like like that that. yeah the only thing and i we were all like visibly laughing about this in the theater that car was the worst thing i've ever seen in my entire life when that shit started and like one of the first things the movie focuses on is that really bad CG backdrop and then the horrible car. Cause when the camera was going through like the world and like going into like the red ribbon base or however the movie started, I was like, Oh no. Yeah. I was yeah. like, Oh no, this looks really <laughs> fucking bad. Um, there were parts where the animation did not look that good. 
but for the most part, it looked a lot better than I thought it was going to. And I just re somebody reposted the ending on Twitter today and, um, where Gohan does the, uh, Makako Sampo or, you know, special beam cannon yes, yeah. to sell and, and, and goes through his head. And when I was watching that, I didn't even really realize in theaters because the animation had probably already been looking like super fucking good for that entire final fight. So I'd already been used to that at that point. But when I was rewatching that at home, I was like, holy shit, this looks really fucking good. Like it they did look, like a yeah. really good job yeah. of that part. And like the animation just looked like really sick and just like the whole thing looked fucking like really nice. If they could maintain that quality throughout, I wouldn't mind it, but obviously I'm still like, hopefully when they bring the anime back, it's going to be hand-drawn animation. Hopefully right. Like, not. like I think it works for this story, but like you couldn't have done Broly like this. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know, like for what this is, I think it works, but I can't see them doing this long-term or wanting to do it long-term, especially like you said, like going in, how like the first like two minutes when it's hand-drawn and then when it does the flashbacks and stuff, it looks, it looks better than anything that they did. It looked in fucking sane during that like the animation they did for the intro to this movie i was like jesus christ that was chef's kiss that was so good and then it goes to like the really shitty cgi backdrop and i was like okay well <laughs> <laughs> here we go but yeah the hand-drawn animation at the beginning of this was like oh my god it, it, it kind of like even then, like it, it looked better than the rest of the movie. Even the movie at its peak, like the the hand drawn animation is always going to look the best, especially well, for Dragon Ball. What did, what'd you guys think of the story overall? Forgetting the me and the beaten potatoes of the film, like I I love the story. I thought I love bringing the Red Rim and Army aspect back because I watched Dragon Ball, and then obviously we watched Z and, and the androids, the Cell, and everything like that. I just I really enjoyed them kind of paying homage the history and bringing back like storylines that we know and love throughout the series you know i mean i just liked how goofy it, like the story was goofy the animation was goofy right. like, like the entire thing was just like on theme um i liked the story i mean it is what it is it's, it's like a smaller in scale story right um like right. the stakes were definitely not as high um because even though they were fighting on earth they were in like that underground fucking like i don't even know what you would call it like the alternate like universe underground that like Red that Red, Army. yeah that Red Army so area. like i never felt that the world was really like in danger like it was a smaller story small i mean it was fun it felt like classic yeah. dragon i don't know the world was definitely in danger when cell max came out yeah, I think the thing is that they were able to contain Cell Max to like one area, but if they would have failed, the world would have been fucked. <laughs> you know, I mean, like he, it would have been destroyed. he definitely his like last blast definitely had enough power to destroy the entire planet for sure. Because yeah. when he charged that up and it went out to like the Earth, and he literally had an energy ball like like probably half the size of planet earth like sticking yeah. out of planet earth and yeah. then he condensed it into like a smaller like blast but still had like all that power yeah. condensed yeah. into that yeah if you would have shot that through the earth's center like say they would have missed that or something it would have been done the earth would have exploded it would have been oh over, yeah if you like... would have shot that at earth it would have been it would have been over with and honestly um I think he shot it at Gohan, but if it would have hit Gohan, it, it might have even destroyed the planet. But Gohan shot the special beam cannon through the blast, which right. like dis dissipated it, and then it like went through. So, by the way, Gohan sniped that motherfucker. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Very appropriate. The Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z is doing a collab with Fortnite right now because like Gohan like boom headshot like on that guy. What'd you guys think of the new Gohan form? Beast Gohan is what I'm being told it's called. That's what you guys said. I didn't look it up. So, I mean, I, I, I love Gohan. There's no secret. I love the look of the special beam cannon because it was like that, like red, magenta, black. Like it looked like a very, like a special attack actually. Like, and also different from Piccolo's. Like it was his own version of it. Sun Gohan Beast is okay. what that's like called in Japanese. Um, uh, I think it's all right. It's it's very reminiscent of Teen Gohan or Gohan Youth Super yeah. Saiyan 2, two. When, he yeah, fought, exactly. when he fought yeah. Cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I, I don't know because I haven't looked ahead or read ahead, but like, is, is Gohan like, cause Jared, you've probably looked ahead cause, cause what super has been going on in Japan for a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. There's like two additional arcs that have happened. Yeah. Since yeah. But the, this is, this is actually, um, so it's no secret that the, I mean, I guess it might be to you, but, um, the right now, the Dragon Ball super anime and the Dragon Ball Super manga, it's not a traditional anime manga relationship where the anime is based on uh, an original manga source material. Okay. The anime and the manga are both based on, um, like, kind of... Or Toriyama's notes, and they kind of just... Basically, yeah, like, Toriyama will do kind of very basic story outline. Okay. And and he'll give it to Toei Toei Animation, and and to the man who's writing the Dragon Ball Super manga Toyotaro, um, and then basically they have to take this very basic story outline, and then kind of adapt it themselves. And okay. So right now, Dragon Ball Super Superhero was actually written before. The dra- where the Dragon Ball Super manga is right now. Basically, they wrote Dragon Ball Super Broly, and then they wrote Dragon Ball Super Superhero. And while they've been producing this, the manga has had two, arcs as of right now, manga exclusive arcs that have both been kind of outlined by Toriyama, but they are not referenced at all or even hinted at at all in Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Right, and that's okay. probably like because as you were saying, they were writing this previously, and that's part of the reason you would kind of have to keep Goku and Vegeta out of this and keep them in their base form, because who knows, like, in these manga arts, like, what transformations they're getting, like, etc. And, they both, so, and like, they both have new forms that they've gotten in the manga very recently. Because you got to think about it, like, this film the, probably took, they were probably even writing this film, like, while they were in post-production for Broly. Like, they had this outline like so far in advance you know like, basically my that my question as you guys talking about was is beast gohan like has he been in anything otherwise no okay all right that's what i'm trying to figure out like because i haven't done any research i've watched all of super i fucking love super i've watched both films obviously but i haven't like I like to be surprised or like to just go in blind. I don't know anything about any of the new Dragon Ball Super that's coming out. So I want to be surprised when I finally get to watch. Yeah, animated. I would say just watch watch the anime if they adapt the new arcs, which I think I'm, it's uh, very likely. Uh, and I I have to say that generally I like Toei's adaptations of Toriyama's stuff more than I like Toyotaro. Like I think that okay. Toyo Toyo got hired because he did Dragon Ball Z fan and manga. He did the Dragon Ball AF, like the fucking Super Saiyan Five that everyone would Google search in like two thousand two. Yeah, he, oh, okay. he did the Dragon Ball AF fan manga, and I'd say the Dragon Ball Super manga kind of comes off like a fan manga sometimes. Okay, and his his character writing is really really bad like a lot of the characters have like very out of character moments or character regression moments a a lot of the time um it's i don't really like the way that he he goes about it but you know it it is what it is um that's why i wish that they would just do movies from now on and like toriyama will just I mean, you think if they, the story. you think if they did just films, it would be more, you know, like profitable too. Because I mean, like just this film, it fucking broke Pokemon the first movie's record, like opening weekend in America. It made like over ten million this weekend. Like yes. I don't know how much money they make off of doing the anime, like on TV, but it's I don't think it's anywhere. Close you don't to really doing make money from doing the anime per se, but it's, it's such a promotional vehicle that it, when the Dragon Ball Super anime is running. Um, games like Dokkan Battle, Xenoverse 2, Dragon Ball Legends, say Goku gets Super Saiyan 17, Super Saiyan God 5, or some shit like that in the anime, the next day, that character will drop in Dokkan, 
and based on the hype that everybody just saw this in the anime and now it's in xenoverse 2 it's a dokkan it's a dragon ball legends and you have that initial hype they'll go on the games spend money in the games to try and get this character or pull this character and that's how they make money with the anime uh I assume probably too. And then you I sell mean, figures and shit after that too. Well, but, I'm sure the commercial, there's gotta be some commercial revenue from Japan. Because yeah. I mean, you get, you get, you know, ad revenue and shit yeah, like that. Yeah. But like, you know, like those characters, um, the, a big blunder with this movie. That's been like a huge, like promotional blunder in all of the games that are available worldwide. So basically every dragon ball game, outside of super dragon ball heroes which is a japan exclusive game um none of these characters have dropped the only characters that have dropped are in dragon ball legends and i think maybe in xenoverse 2 gamma 1 and 2 are are in the game but beast gohan not in the game cell max just came out in dokkan battle as a boss event you can't play you can't uh get his character in the game yet he's the hardest boss in the game right now i haven't even tried to face him yet um i don't like i'm gonna wait for the new units to come out to try and take him on because i know that my deck isn't strong enough but um yeah no beast gohan no orange piccolo um no uh piccolo potential awakened no piccolo what? giant form uh, I'm going to interrupt you a little bit, but I'm curious because now you're starting to bring up some of the characters that were in the film that are new. Piccolo is not new to the film, but felt forms and stuff like this. What do you guys think of Gamma 1 and 2? Because I feel like maybe they, I, I don't know again, uh, you know, maybe going forward that they're going to be in the anime, going to be in the manga. Uh, what would you guys think of Gamma 1 and 2? Gamma 1 will. Gamma 1 is going to be a regular character now. Okay. I mean, I, I don't want to spoil. I kind of said that. Try not to spoil. Too we much, already but... talked about Cell Max. I mean, this is right, right. Pretty much coming into this podcast, you gotta have to expect spoilers. We're discussing the movie as in depth as we as we want to. So right. Gamma Two is dead. Right. <laughs> yeah. He is. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think of like having Gamma and then obviously uh, Doctor Hedo? I mean, like having him in. The I mean, they'll still continue. be around. I don't. I don't think they're joining they'll, the main crew. But I would say that Gamma One could probably fight alongside the Z fighters. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what I'm. But thinking. he's gonna get his fucking shit packed in pretty much every time. I don't think he's going to have any impressive outings like he did in this movie. Which even in this movie, he wasn't that impressive because he was more or less kind of fighting a little bit stronger than like ultimate gohan I, or i think i think he was even getting busted up by ultimate gohan he was like a little bit stronger than super saiyan gohan i think the problem was that even ultimate gohan or like like the you know like i'll say the enhanced because i forget the word like uh piccolo before he became orange piccolo like they were probably almost like neck and neck. And that's why they needed that because, you know, once orange Piccolo came around, I mean, he was obviously way stronger than both gammas. Yeah. I, I mean, just like, here's how I gauge it because like gamma one will be there. I, apparently he's capsule corp security. Now mm -hmm. Dr. Hedo will be there as comedic relief. He's going to be a comedic character. Going, I forward. liked him. I like Dr. Hedo, by the way, I thought he was, yeah, funny. he was good. He was fine. He loves yeah. Oreos. I kind of like that. Or, you know, I mean, it's just funny. He'll be a comedic character going forward. Here's the thing with gamma one and two. Now I don't know about cell max and there's been statements by Toriyama and everything that are, that seem kind of outrageous. But <laughs> um, Gamma 1 and 2, if Goku and Vegeta were on the planet, those dudes would have got fucking ripped in half. Like, there's no way. Oh, yeah. Goku, like, Gamma 1 and 2, like, Goku would have fucking iced both of those dudes with his eyes closed, probably. You still have to think, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, obviously. But you still have to think that for them, from the power levels that I remember, for them to be even able to keep up with ultimate Gohan. I mean, they had to be about three to four times as strong as 17 or 18 were initially from well, like, even 
you know well yeah they're stronger than the initial but android 17 is way fucking stronger now now. than he was in the art android arc i think android 18 probably isn't that much stronger but android 17 in the anime as ridiculous as it's as it is and this is a toei um right in but android 17 thought evenly with super saiyan blue goku somehow which is hilarious because that means if they're going on like the power levels i remember even though i know it's all bullshit but he's at least like 50 to 100 million stronger than probably anyone that was in this last film android 17 would have fucking packed gohan's shit in the tournament of power (laughs) like he just would have fucking like beat the fucking piss out of that kid gohan Ultimate Gohan fought um, Super Saiyan Blue Goku. But if I recall correctly, Goku kind of just like was goofing around with him yeah, like, pretty much like fucked around with him. Basically, I'm excited to see what they do with Beast Gohan, because like I said, I've always been a Gohan fan. If they could bring Gohan back from he's the- not going to get any big wins. This was his big win. Well, because like, even even with the power up, like I, because people are like debating online if he's on like the same level as like Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta is like not even like no, I, I still don't even no, think it's that was the, Geekdom just put out a video and his bullshit power scalers that he has on there <laughs> think that Beast Gohan is stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. He's and, not. No. No, not definitely not. They both they all said current Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta would tear yeah, him in half like it was nothing no way. they're saying he's stronger than super saiyan blue gogeta in the in, broly in, movie. in the broly uh, i don't think that much time's passed i just don't think that's i don't possible think at all. i don't think that it's i still don't think that he's stronger than that i think that blue gogeta even in the broly movie would have fucking ate cell max's lunch well because like sure. really like we don't even see how strong super saiyan blue gogeta is because even there's when he's a comment fighting- from Toriyama, I don't mean to interrupt you, buddy. That said that if Cell if Cell Max was completed, he may be stronger than even or it's like something along the lines of if Cell Max was completed, even Broly could not stop him. Like okay. something like that. Okay. So the their whole stance was is he talking about are they talking about current Broly that's been Zenkai boosted from training and fighting Gogeta? Or are they talking about Broly as he was in the first movie? And, you know, we haven't really seen Broly's, like, current power. I just don't think... And even even so, Gogeta Blue was, like, toying with Broly at the end of that movie. That's like, what I was saying. Yeah. He was just bitch-smacking him around. He wasn't even using, like, his full power. I mean, like, so we he really fought, don't know how strong he is. He fought Broly, like, max power Broly in super saiyan for like the majority of that fight and then once he went super saiyan blue he just started fucking pounding that guy like he was just hitting him with the body shots and just fucking i think he hit him with like the spirit crusher and stuff like that it was i mean gogeta blue is just he's just ridiculous you gotta (laughs) you gotta think that Gogeta is Vegeta and Goku Goku's power levels combined and then multiplied multipl- <laughs> multiplied several times and they state that in the movie um but you know they were they were saying some shit that was like oh it's been proven that Vegito is stronger than Gogeta it's it's never been proven. I don't know what their proof is and if anything when the Broly movie came out it was it was stated by Toriyama I'm pretty sure that Vegito and Gogeta are even like the multiplier is the same for Patara fusion as it is for, um, um, Metamoran fusion. It, the thing that they said was proving that it was stronger, um, was that fans always assumed that Patara fusion was a more perfect bond because it was supposed to be permanent. And then it was proven since they're mortals that it's not, not. It's, it wasn't proven. It was retconned that it's not a permanent bond anymore. But regardless, 
Toriyama recently said that it's the the fusions are even. Was it uh what'd you guys think? You probably don't give a shit, but I mean for sake of talking about the film, but nice to see uh Goten and Trunks actually growing up a little bit. Like they have like different like character models and they're actually like aging. Trunk lo- Trunks looks nearly the same. Like he looks a little younger. Um, but Goten, yeah, had a completely new design. It looked, it looked cool. They're both yeah. wearing they're both wearing long sleeves in the movie. Um, but they both looked very skinny. Yeah, I'm, I, I I'm just that. assuming that that direction is to kind of hint that they don't train right yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, especially Goten, because you know we see. Well, how old is he in this movie? Fourteen, something like yeah. that. Fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Well, so I think I think like, I think Trunks is like fifteen, so Goten would be it, like thirteen. Trunks is older than Goten. Yeah, go. He's like a year older than Goten. Yeah. Um. Is he like around the same age that he is in History of Trunks? Uh, I think in History no, of Trunks, no, no, he's no. the in same History age. Of Trunks, he's, he's older than he would be right now. Well, no, think. he's I'm saying he's the same age as he is in Z, like when he's like 16. Like no, because no, because they build the time machine after most of yeah, the events he's, of History of Trunks. He's, he's definitely older in Z in his first appearance. He's 100 percent You can see the physical difference between them when he first shows up in Z. You mean when he's when he, he is in the majority of with of, King of Cold of with King Cold and Frieza talking about the that's his first, first appearance yeah, in yeah, Z. Yeah. yeah. He's probably I'd say he's probably like 21 in that, don't you think? Or no, he's he's, no, still he's supposed to be like 16. Eight, yeah. He's gotta be 18 then, because I feel like in, in history of trunks, the film, he's probably like 16. It's a TV special. T- okay. Because it's All been right. forever since mm-hmm. I've seen that. Like Probably a little time has passed, but I don't think it's been. I'd say I'd say he's 16 in History of Trunks and 18 when he first premiered. I swear to God, he's like 16 when he comes back. I'm gonna look it up right now. All you right, guys and I'll look talking. up how old is he in in uh, History of Trunks. Miles, talk about your favorite character of all time. <laughs> I do love Trunks. I uh, it's nice to see like there's some humor in this. I I like the Krillin parts of this film actually a lot. I love that Krillin always Trunks comes back. is at age 14, it says. In where? When future Trunks, when he comes back. That's what it says. I don't know if that's true. That seems... Anyway. That seems insane, you Uh I like to see uh, Krillin come in, like, all of a sudden, be like, yeah, to do this, come in with the Destructo disc and um, a sol- uh, solar flare or whatever. Um, it was nice to see Krillin get a little bit of time in. I always like seeing Krillin spots tn spots obviously yamcha's never gonna have a spot again in any film or show ever uh neither is chaotsu um it was nice to see yajirobe it was nice to see the extended dragon ball cast in this like yajirobe dende um there was no roshi in this right roshi no, wasn't in roshi the film at all there, right no. um do you think they're gonna do a side note i guess just dragon ball like but then this other source is saying future trunks to 18 during the cell saga. Okay. Yeah, it's saying that um he traveled from 20 years in the future to two years before he was born. But yeah, I guess it would be two yeah. years before he was born, because I guess he was one in the Android saga. Yeah. Like he was present, he was born. Um, right, right. Um, so that would make him 18. And I guess um, I would have to rewatch History of Trunks to see how much time passes between the death of Gohan and Bulma building the um, time machine for Trunks to go back. But at least one year passes between Gohan dying and the time machine being built and Trunks going back. Me, me and Joel were just talking about History of Trunks the other day. Did you guys end up watching Dragon Ball Evolution? A side note? Or on the yeah, podcast? it's horrible. It's so bad. <laughs> you guys ended up, you watched it? Yeah, we watched it. It's... Have you ever seen it, buddy? I've seen it, yeah. Okay, because otherwise I'll bring the Blu-ray over. I do have it. Oh, yeah, I can't watch. wait for that one. Bro, it's, I, it's your ultimate favorite. Masterpiece. Dog uh, shit bad. Like, absolute piss bad. It's, uh, it's like a Power Rangers Dragon Ball themed episode. I mean, it's made by the same company that makes Power Rangers. The film was like Saban films or whatever. It's uh, like it's Dragon Ball in like name, like in that, like the characters' names are, you know, the characters' names. 
and there's a Kamehameha in it, and there's Dragon Balls. And, like, that's <laughs> it. That's the only sim- similarity. Other I mean, than that, Goku is absolutely nothing like Goku. Like, right. you couldn't take, like, a character, like, any more, like, distant from the source material. Roshi, I guess, was kind of like Roshi. He was kind of perverted. I don't know. I guess Chi Chi was a fighter in both of them. I don't, I don't know. know. I haven't watched it. I have I actually haven't watched it since I got the Blu-ray, like a random like Blu-ray sale when I bought them, like in person. It was just a bunch of shit on sale. I got evolution for like three or four dollars new. I mean, fuck, and who cares? Just funny to have because it's just like the fact that they made a live action Dragon Ball film and and it was so far after Z had already finished. Right. And Super didn't even exist yet. So it was such a weird time to make a live action Dragon Ball film. It was really bad. I, I didn't like it at all. I just like how, you know, I just thought of this. How is Krillin not in Dragon Ball Evolution? I forgot that he wasn't, to be honest. Like I said, I haven't watched this since it came out. I forgot that he, yeah, yeah that seems like. If you're going to make a Dragon Ball film and in your regard, if they're going to do it because the Piccolo's in it, like Krillin, Roshi, Piccolo, Goku, and then maybe at the end, or depending on where you want to go, Gohan and Chi Chi, Bulma, obviously. Well, like you'd have to think, like if you watch well, the. Well, Bulma's in it. Yeah, but... Bulma's in it. But like Krillin, know, yeah. Krillin was like an integral part of the, the fucking story of the original Piccolo arc. Krillin's so, yeah. like one of the most, like, uh, you know he's just one of the more relevant he's probably the most relevant human character in the series yeah exactly yeah and he Yamcha, should have been like one of goku's like classmates or whatever like it would have been so i would have rather have had i would have rather had krillin in the movie than yamcha i know yamcha's oh, yeah. introduced and yamcha's introduced in the series before krillin is yeah. but basically after yamcha's introduction he's like never relevant again yeah um who i mean i i don't know the movie that movie was really bad it's super bad i i i don't even know what to say about it i i could sit here and talk all day about how the cg was bad and and how all the characters it's just bad and if yeah, you're a dragon just... ball fan you don't need to see it ever it's <laughs> no. just like I just like a bunch of shitty cinema, so I don't mind watching stuff like that. But I mean, we all know that I'm not going to hide it or anything like that. I mean, it's not <clears throat> it's not faithful to Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, GT, Super, anything. But um, it's kind of like a funny time capsule thing for me where like I do want to go back and watch it sometime, but I'm not going to pretend it's good. You know, it's very 90s almost like it is. No, I it, it's made- like it's made by the same people that make power rangers like it felt like a dragon ball themed power rangers episode to me it's just weird because it's like <laughs> if that was made in like 1995 i would like <laughs> kind of expect it because the 90s is like the era of like making live action adaptations of things and having it be like very unfaithful to the source material like almost right. nothing like the source material that's like a very 90s thing and now we live kind of in the era where like a lot of live action adaptations of comics or video games show a lot of love and like appreciation for their source material like you can wa- i haven't watched either of the sonic movies but they're popular i can assume that in the Sonic movies, Sonic fans watch it, and there's a lot of fucking winks and and nods to actual Sonic that like make Sonic like to the source material, the original games or the anime or the or comic books or anything that makes Sonic fans like, yeah, okay. And the like the character of Sonic is probably faithful to how Sonic actually acts. In, in one of the uh, adaptations i'm i'm pretty sure he probably doesn't act like he did in the 90s cartoon where he was like yeah <laughs> dude like, but no, that's not that far off i mean yeah everything you're saying is correct about the sonic 
films. They're both. I, I mean, they're both. I need good. to see the second Sonic one. I can't have seen it. I it's need good. To see it so bad. It's good. It's not going to be as good as this third one. I have high hopes for Shadow. So. Oh damn! Spoiler. I mean, I, well, I mean, had literally, a, the, I had a in feeling. The, Bill, like but. everyone knows, so. I don't have Twitter, man. I stay offline. But I mean, hard, even so. more, even more so, you know, with like Marvel films and, and DC films. Now these are like adapting like comic book arcs and shit that happen in Marvel series, DC series. And you can just tell that they're, they're hiring directors and writers and shit that actually fucking like this shit that actually read right. comic books that actually are into superheroes and stuff like that to a point where it's getting kind of cliche now. So, you know what I mean? But, like, you could just tell, like, whoever directed and wrote Dragon Ball Evolution didn't give a flying fuck about Dragon Ball. I mean, you no. kind of have to care these days, like, the internet being, like, what it is. Like, think about, think back to the fucking 90s version of, like, Godzilla, you know? Like, when they fucking did that, completely unfaithful to the source material. Like, you, yeah, like, the film may have bombed or, like, whatever, like, bad, like, reviews. But you're not having, like, the internet hate that you're having today. Like, you kind of right. have to do it the way the people want it or you're gonna pay for it so and who directed that role of demerick yeah yes. the fucking yeah your goat one of miles's favorites oh my god i was at what, yes, what else did he do uh independence day right yeah god tier yeah he i was i was watching independence day yesterday while i was having lunch like it was on in the background and fuck independence day so we were actually me and joel were literally talking about independence day driving on the way to buddy's house to go see dragon ball super (laughs) even the second independence day for what it was i oh don't stop okay no no we're not getting into that well no i I liked nobody's good nobody's gonna watch independence day too though <laughs> have either of you seen it? No, I don't. Really oh, all right, it. I, Miles, I, Miles, have you seen the new Top Gun? I have not seen Top. Gun I know yet. someone who has seen it in theaters six times, and I'm I heard like, that it's Dan and Joel both said that it's incredible. And everyone, much, lo- my aunt went and watched it because she loves Top Gun. My aunt doesn't go to the cinema. She's like, it was amazing, and I'm just like, fuck. Pretty man, much everyone play. says that it shits on the original, that it's like way better. I, I was gonna say like. The original Top Gun, like it's fine, but I, I don't love it. Like to be like, it's not. It's a good film, but I don't love it. Like I don't want to go back and watch it. Just like I, I want a sequel to Over the Top. Oh that movie rips. That movie yeah, I know so it good. is good. Uh, Are you tired of plain old breakfast? Sure is not sugary enough. Are you tired of burnt pancakes and waffles? Then you need slapjacks. The slap I got your face that cause a chemical reaction to heat up. No cooking required, just slap and eat. Don't believe us? Here's a satisfied customer. Slapjacks are the best breakfast food ever made. Slapjacks, slap those smiles back. <laughs> You heard it here, kids. Slapjack saves lives. Order at www.slapjacks.com. All right. We're, we're going to bring it back a little bit into Super. And I guess I'm, I'm going to ask you, where do you want to see Dragon Ball Super go? Like, if this is like, so basically I was, I was bringing up the manga and the anime like earlier. Uh, like, so is this right now, like this film? is like the end of the current storylines, even though there's two arcs that I haven't read or like, I don't know anything about. Like, is this like the last arc right now? Like just this film, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. As far as the Dragon Ball timeline goes, this is like the latest happening. Okay. Like um, the manga arcs take place before this movie. They take place right, right, right. in between Broly and this film. Okay. So where where do you guys want to see Dragon Ball Super go from this? Like, do you think there's anything that like like that you loved about this film that you'd like to see them bring into the anime? Do you, I mean, do you want to see more Beast Gohan? Do you want we're see- gonna we're gonna see more Beast Gohan? Okay, like the, right. The right, form's right. not going anywhere. What do you I mean what do you guys think of Piccolo's writing and performance? Because I thought, I, I mean, Piccolo was on another Pic- level. Pic- no, Piccolo was another was level. Yeah. Piccolo carried the entire movie. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. Like, even, like Piccolo was the lead of the film. Like Gohan yeah. was there too, but Piccolo really was the star. Gohan the was the, the hero at the end of the day, but Piccolo carried the film. Like Piccolo was the main character. 
Piccolo did the reconnaissance. Phil- he had the funny phone, the phone, his phone in his phone case. The way he did like the like uh like video chats and well, everything. just like the way he Legendary. holds it. That's like how you would hold your phone if you were on yeah. FaceTime. Like, so, like he's an alien, he doesn't know how to hold the phone. Exactly. I'm an alien. Well, True, originally this film was written to be a piccolo movie. That's what you said. Yeah. And the producer of the film or of of like the Dragon Ball Room or whatever. I can't remember his name right now. Uh, Akia. Akio Ioku, Akio Ioku, Ioku san said, um, You need to add Gohan in it. And so Toriyama was like, All right. I, but Pic- Piccolo is Toriyama's favorite character. So he tried to write a movie for Piccolo. And, you know, Piccolo, he was he was the main character of the movie. Yeah. He, he didn't get like the final kill. He helped, but, um, he was the main character in the movie. He's the one that drove the plot forward and the film yeah. like followed him throughout. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. I like when Piccolo, because Piccolo has his moments a few other times in the Z series, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, obviously super. Uh, I like that they still focus on Piccolo at times because he is a badass. He's always training. He obviously loves Gohan. Uh, obviously loves Gohan's daughter as we see in this, what do you think about uh, Pan and like her and the whole, like her arc of like, I finally learned how to fly when the moment, like truly yelling at her at the end, like fly, you know, and like her being kidnapped and all that stuff. I mean, Pan was all right. I guess. I mean, I don't know. Like I've never really been interested in Pan. I will say that this is probably the most I've ever cared about her ever I, in I Dragon agree. Ball ever. I agree. Oh, it's yeah, way better than GT Pan. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah. Yeah. What did you think of Cell Max, Miles? Uh, I talked about this with Buddy the other night, but I, I would say if if there were any, if there was any weak point of the film, I think the ending felt very rushed to me. Might be me only, but like Cell Max, it kind of he felt, you know, like kind of like tagged on. I know they were building to it. I know they talked about it, but you know, it was all the gamma shit, all the fights, all this. They needed a main villain. I get it, Cell Max he was released and the whole thing was that he was nowhere near completion. So he didn't really have almost like a cognitive thought. He was basically like a beast. He was a Kaiju. They were fighting and it was cool, but it, you know, it's like, to me, that's the biggest film's flaw, I guess. Like I get like the vibe of the film is like more silly and stuff, but I wish it would have had a better villain, I guess. I mean, it's, I mean, it's the same problem I have with Wrath of the Dragon. Like, I'm not interested in a kaiju in a Dragon Ball film. I think that they did the fighting a kaiju way better in this than they did in Wrath of the Dragon. I agree. I agree 100% with that. I think the fight with Cell Max was way better than the fight against Harutagarn, aside from the Dragon Fist. Dragon Fist is hype as fuck. Um, <laughs> but I liked Cell Max. I think that the only thing... I don't think that he felt tacked on at all. They've been, they've been hinting at him and teasing him the entire movie built up to him. I thought the fight with him was, was good. And um, they fought him. It was like a good, like it was a good portion. Yeah. It was was like a good, like 20, 25 minute fight that, that had like ups and downs of it. Like, you know, they're doing this, they're that they're trying different things. It's not working. Um, So like, I thought that that was that was all good. The only thing, the only criticism I have about Cell Max is that Go Gohan killed Cell, and then you brought out Cell Max, which is like the next evolution of like kind of like a cell like creature. It would have made like more sense to me to like kind of like create like. I don't know, like some sort of DNA or something found at the site of like where cell died or something where they create this new upgraded cell, cell max. They like make it tie DNA. in, like make it tie in better. Well, they did. No, they did. That's how they, I mean, they did say that they actually had cell DNA and that's why it was. As far no, they said they based it off of Jero's original uh, like blueprints. blueprints. Or, oh, OK, all right, all right. So that's what it was based on. It, the only thing that it missed on me is the Gohan Cell connection. Like I thought that that was supposed to be there because Gohan killed Cell. Gohan right. killed Cell Max. But Cell Max kind of came out. Gohan, 
like made no mention of oh it's cell or or like in cell being as un- unintelligible as it is there was no like gohan you know like this is the guy yeah, that yeah. killed like right i mean because it was because it was a different before. cell it was, it was a different of, cell yeah but yeah, like so. i thought that there's a way narrative narratively that they could have yeah, if you, yeah, sell, I mean, if, like the old cells memories. Well, right. If it was his, like if it was his DNA, they could have done that. And theoretically, you could have done that because even Hito or Hedo or whatever, he had like the little like bee creature that was like flying around, and that's how they got he, the DNA to be. They with, could, they like, could have done the easiest thing where they're like, like the what's his face, I had a red ribbon army. It could have been like we showed up to the cell fight, and there were a, literally a a couple cells or or material from cell they kept it in like a fucking test tube or like storage thing and they gave it 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 can't be cells because if there was any of that left he could regenerate from it that's true yeah that's true uh but if it's i don't know they could do some they they could could, do some fucking bullshit where like I mean, they wrecked uh, on everything else. The where, <laughs> where like right. Red Ribbon Army was um, watching the fight, they sent like a reconnaissance. Like, well, that was basically like where a I reconnaissance was going droid at, yeah. that before Cell died or something, like pricked him and took a a piece of like that took some, like a yeah. like a blood sample, yeah, or something from him that was no longer active. I guess since it was separated from cell for for so long, right? So, anything to to build that connection again because this was cell in appearance only. He didn't regenerate like cell does. He well, had, right. He had no one else's techniques. Like that's a big thing about cell. Cell knew everyone's techniques, and everyone's fighting style. He could do a Kamehameha. He could do a Gallic gun. He could do a special beam cannon. He did all of those moves in Dragon Ball Z. This cell max didn't do any of that. He was literally only similar to cell in appearance. He had none of cells abilities at all. And I know he was incomplete. I know that, but if you're going to make a cell, at least give him one of Cell's abilities. He didn't do any of Cell's abilities at all. Well, he just I, looked kind of like Cell. I think I think that's kind of where I was going at when I brought it in, where it was like uh, why it felt, I guess, underwhelming or like one of my only complaints is because he was basically just like a dumb monster. He wasn't like the ultimate fighting machine, the ultimate warrior. Like he was so incomplete that like what you said, he was only sell in name and appearance only like you you talked to me in the theater like why isn't he regenerating his arm when his arm got cut off and i was like the only really explanation is the fact that he's so incomplete that he hadn't even learned the ability to regenerate yet the weird thing about him though is and i noticed this in the theater i don't know if you guys noticed it or not or even thought about it but i did instantly when he got his arm cut off he had wires coming out of it like, oh, I did know. Yeah, I did know. Like, that. A, yeah, like yeah. a mechanical android, where yeah. Cell is an organic being. He had right. no wires. Anytime he was dismembered, it was tissue. There, um, even though he's an android, he was like one hundred percent organic, right? Like an organic android. However, the fuck that works. Um, so it's just weird to me because even if he was incomplete, what part? Of Dr. Jiro's blueprints, did you exactly use? Because yeah, he was not yeah. organic, he didn't have everyone else's abilities, and he couldn't regenerate. And it's it, it's weird because like when they started, because like he was incomplete, but he'd obviously been developing for a while. Like, do you think he even started like in development as okay, he comes out the fucking cocoon and then he and because now obviously he's second form cell, right? Can we assume if he was complete, it would have been third form? But like he's not absorbing anything, so like I, well, I don't it know been what like a like a massive like perfect cell. Uh, yeah, but like it doesn't. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make sense because he's not absorbing. You know what's anything. funny about that too is that if if he had wanted to and he never did it, I was perfect, probably gonna bring up the same thing. But go ahead, I will go. <laughs> perfect cell could also be giant if he had yeah, wanted to. Right. He could have went giant form because that's a Piccolo a Namekian ability. And Cell had all of Piccolo's abilities. One of 
his earliest abilities that he showed in Dragon Ball was turning giant. The thing that I, I kept wondering during the film, especially in the final fight, is... I thought he was going to absorb the gammas. Yes, like, exactly. Like, I thought he was going to absorb one of the gammas, and either he didn't have to change, but just clearly have like a new power level or something, because he kept swinging the tail, and they kept zooming in on it. I'm like, oh, he's going to absorb a gamma. But he never did, you know? All and the I, tail ever did was release energy. Right, Exactly. I did like his energy attack where it was almost through like all of his big pores. He was shooting out, you know, blasts and stuff like that. I thought that was cool. Um, it was just weird because yeah, that's another ability that cell had that he did not was yeah. that absorption. He couldn't absorb. Or like, maybe even if it wasn't it in the Android, like we don't know. I mean, if he could, then why, why wouldn't he do it? I don't why know. That's... Like, why wouldn't he prick like fucking, Dr. Hedo or like some random red ribbon soldier and drain his life force. I I, I want to say that they talked, they made a big note about how both of the gammas could learn everyone's fighting style as they went on. And they talked about that, like learning their moves and getting better and getting stronger. So I am curious uh, with gamma as they become a part of the Dragon Ball super series if they really will keep up the power level and keep them as like a second tier character, you know, like as like, they're not going to be relevant. Somebody's going to show up at capsule corp looking for Vegeta and gamma one's going to be like, uh, yeah, nice try. You're not going. And he's going to get one shot. That's that's (laughs) gamma one's fate. He's going to get fucking one shotted from here out. He's not going to die. No one's going to kill him, but he's going to get fucked up very easily. He's still, if you look at like, I guess fighters in the entire universe we are in currently, if we're talking about the different universes, uh, he's got to be in the top 10 fighters in this universe, right? I mean, he has well, to there's be. not really that many fighters in this are... universe, yeah. Because I mean, when you, you get when you TN get into the top, top 10, 10, I'm pretty sure like Krillin is in the top 10. I would say, I'd figure Krillin, probably there's like 10. a huge gap between right now the top five fighters. And like, and then like the next, right? If, if we're counting only mortal fighters, because then it would be like the top seven, because then you have Beerus and Whis, right? Who shit on everyone, and the gap is would then be like a huge gap between one and two, and then a huge gap between two and three, and then there's Goku, Vegeta, Broly, Piccolo, Gohan, right? And then, um, and then you boo, would probably boo. What about boo? They, we have no idea how strong Majin Buu is. Buu right could now. be the literally the strongest one out of everyone. Uh, Buu like Boo has to be well, stronger well, than well, Krillin, obviously. You well, Buu is one it. billion times stronger yeah, that's than I Krillin, mean, yeah. for sure. In the Tournament of Power saga, on like five days of training, Buff Buu was like giving it to like Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Well, because right. even like I've read part of like the Moro arc and everything and like they explain more of Boo's backstory and it's like literally insane how strong he is, but like we'll never see him at full power. We'll never see him at full power because he's a comedic character and every time yeah. they need him, he's going to fall asleep. And that's the joke with Boo now. I think it. I think it's still good how they have the running joke that Hercule's still the strongest. Yeah, like they make that, a comment so and it's like good. we still have no idea how powerful Mister Satan is. Yeah, that was. We can only guess level. how powerful yeah. Mister Mister Satan actually is. I was like, damn, yeah, that's so good. Level. Do you think? Do you think Satan, as far as like Earth fighters, would he be like in the top fifteen? No, because he's not as in strong. The top, as- in the top fifteen, yeah. Okay. Out of, of Earth, Earth spiders. No, okay. Like, out of, I, I, you mean Herc- out of you mean out of humans, right? Mm-hmm. Out, of, out humans, of humans, sure. But you still got to put TN. Krill- well, like, like, like literally TN's all of them. stronger than Krillin. But are there? But are there fifteen human characters stronger? Well, that's what, that's what I'm. Fate. Well, even the strongest human character on Earth right now is Oob. <sighs> True, he's human. I forgot about that. I'm surprised Oob wasn't in this. I'm surprised they haven't done more of the Oob, to be honest. It would be like Oob. Um, I'm pretty sure Toriyama's statements uh, say that Krillin is the strongest human. He's stronger than Tien now because Tien yeah, trains suppo- constantly. In theory, yeah, Krill- according Krillin's to Toriyama, the Krillin is stronger than Tien. And Jeez, then it would go right. Tien. Um, I guess Yamcha. 
Okay, let all right. Chow, right. Chow is human, right? Chow Tzu would be stronger than Yamcha. Chow okay, yeah, is probably Chow stronger Tzu than okay. Is, but... All right, here's the real question because we know Chi Chi is stronger than Hercule. Chi Chi is above yes, Hercule, 100%, yeah. In the in the an ox king is probably stronger than Hercule as well. Uh, I got I got a question. Yazerobi is 100%. Oh, I... oh, Roshi. Uh, how can we Roshi. fucking write off you? Roshi is probably stronger. Roshi stronger than Yamcha. Right. Okay. Um, oh, I got I got a question though. Not even just Earth, just Z fighters in general. It makes zero sense that Roshi is stronger than Yamcha. By it the makes way. Zero <laughs> sense. Uh, okay, but Z fighters for real. So Yamcha trained with King Kai. Roshi has done nothing, and then they were like, "Oh, tournament of power. We're bringing R- Yoshi uh, Roshi." And then they're like, "Oh, what about Yamcha?" Go oh, get was like, "Yeah, Yamcha would get hurt." <laughs> Okay, so TN is, you know, TN stronger than Goten and Trunks, though, is the thing. No, like, in not. their child forms. No, he's not. He is. He's not. He's not. There's no way. He's not stronger than Goten and Trunks. TN's never, he, he's not stronger than any Super Saiyan character. Maybe not when they're super, okay, maybe not at their levels now, but he was stronger than them in Z no, when they were kids. No, he was not stronger than them in Z. They no, couldn't. They, they couldn't. They would have. They would have washed him. They would have fucking washed him for sure. I guarantee it. There's never going to be any human that's stronger time. than a half Saiyan or Saiyan or anything. Or, like, there's no way. Or as a Super Saiyan, like nobody will be strong. Like no human character will ever be stronger than a Super Saiyan. Like I'd be willing to bet Pan, you would Pan never depend, stronger than Tien. Like if Toriyama did for some reason be like, mm, I'll have Tien fight Goten and Trunks. Like he would. Ne- he didn't write that obviously. But if he did, do you really think that it would be TN fucking busting up on Goten or Trunks? Okay, so I want to look. I want to ask this though. So when TN, I get it because it's, tri- it's the triangle Trunks blast. When, hurt when he- Vegeta in the in the training chamber enough to piss Vegeta off that Vegeta fucking like punched him in the face and then told and that him was, he was child get Trunks, ice cream. right? I just that was brain. child Trunks. Yeah. Okay, all right. So with TN though, when he was holding back, like second form cell with the, with the, like the tri blast everything by like the that. way go go 10 and trunks are way stronger than when he was doing that <laughs> yeah I, I know but the, the fact still i just uh i'm i'm trying to figure out the power levels this is a long because... forgot this is a long forgotten thing and i actually don't even remember what happened but tn actually fought majin buu for a second i remember this yeah that's he what i mean like like i don't I, think he did anything to him but he showed up I just don't see how Krillin's stronger than TN, to be honest. He's the strongest I, human character. That's what Toriyama said. I mean, there's no evidence to suggest otherwise. Like, it's the same thing with 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 Piccolo. Piccolo trains literally every day, and Piccolo and TN train every le- day. They all that's all they do left, is train. Yeah, but TN is also human, right? So I, I could mm-hmm. I could take that. Like, okay, TN is human. He trains every day, but he doesn't get that much stronger because of the limited potential of a human. The thing with Piccolo is that he's a, a warrior Namek and right. like he trains every day and yet he's so far back in the fucking dust. Like, I don't get it, bro. Well, like, obvi- obviously Piccolo is stronger than Goten and Trunks. You can't even deny that. Like, you can't no, yeah, Piccolo, least, Piccolo yeah. is stronger than Goten Way and Trunks, especially, them, yeah. especially now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially now. But and I would say even in the Majin Buu saga, he was stronger than them individually. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the thing about that is even then he couldn't he couldn't hope to fight Majin Buu. I mean, neither could they individually. But for a second there, they were the only hope of planet Earth. Right. Was their fusion technique. They were right. like the greatest hope for planet Earth. So, I mean, I don't know. But no, there's no... Tien was never stronger than Goten and Trunks. As, as hybrid Saiyans, and they advanced faster than Gohan did. That's true. They did. Uh, they became Super Saiyans when they were like, like five years young. old. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know I'm a TN Mark, but I know that he is one of the, like, I, uh, he's, he's, he's like, definitely he's, the second strongest human character for sure. I don't think anybody matches up to him. Is there another human character that? No, he's always been booked. I, I still, in he's theory, always been booked. he's always been booked well, bro. I still, in theory, can't believe that Krillin's stronger than him just based on all the showings of their fighting. But I mean, you got to think, like, Krillin, he's Word had of so God. much more. 
I mean, Krillin was on Namek. He was like, Tien wasn't really like involved as much. I don't know. I wonder, I mean, this is just, this is 100% headcanon at this point. And I don't think Toriyama has even thought about it. I think Toriyama just likes Krillin more than Tien. So when yeah. asked in an interview, yeah. he was just like, oh, Krillin's the strongest human fighter. Um, A way to try to make that logical in your head is that when Krillin was on Namek, he did have his potential awakened by Guru. Exactly, exactly. And so maybe like any training that Krillin does, he advances it, faster fast, than Tien yeah, that makes sense. due to his yeah. potential being awakened so long ago. That I, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. That's good. Yeah, I'll buy that. And that would also explain Gohan as well. That Gohan has massive power jumps, like pretty out much whenever yeah, it's convenient yeah. to the plot. Right. That's something that happened in this movie as well. To the point where it's pretty much being said that Gohan's stronger than Goku right now. Which I don't buy. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I don't think he's stronger. I don't think he's stronger than Broly. Like I'd put him in like number four. I don't know. I still think if Goku oh, and Vegeta would have showed up, they would have one shot at so Like still, like I don't know. Based on the evidence I've seen, I mean, it's hard because they're so far in the series, and there's so many like what ifs and things like that. Like it, I don't know. We gotta. How long did Tien last in the Tournament of Power? He outlasted Krillin. Krillin was the first fighter for Universe. That's what I mean. Like every time Tien shows up for what it is, it's a good, it's a good, like, you know, he's there. That's why I'm like, how is Krillin stronger than Tien? I feel like the Destructo disc, though, is just such a good move. Like if they want to base it even just on that one move, because didn't they say Destructo disc could like cut someone's like apart, like, regardless of like certain power levels like obviously not everyone, yeah that's like, i'm pretty sure that's been said that destructo disc can pretty much like cut or whatever yeah i'm also pretty sure that it's been stopped before it has because didn't uh didn't frieza like swat it away when he's an ultimate for like final form like he did a structure so. and, and everyone that they, everything everyone that or maybe even android 18 or or one 17. of them one of them just like backhanded that's it away. Frieza. It was Frieza. Wasn't Frieza it? Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. that he's, you know, but at a certain point in the series, everybody starts regenerating. So Krillin will catch him with a destructo disc, and it doesn't matter because right, right. they'll just grow, they'll just reattach their bodies. It's not if you're a human character. <laughs> um yeah, well, I don't even remember what the fuck I was gonna say. Um Beerus and Whis, Goku and Vegeta, and Broly. I did not like Whis's design in this. He looks horrible in this movie. He was he so, so tall. Bad. He was like, he's so always tall. tall. He's always tall, been but tall, he's but... so much taller than everyone. I don't know. He's taller Be- than Goku normally. Beerus is yeah. Beerus is god tier in this fucking film. Yeah, Beerus, Beerus is so funny. Be- Beerus is insane in this film. Well, Beerus is probably the best Dragon Ball character. To be introduced since Dragon Ball came back, oh, which he's is hilarious because he yeah. was like the first new character introduced. Well, he's not because um, Vegeta's little brother was the first Dragon Ball character to be introduced since True. Dragon Ball came back. But, go. but that's um, horrible. horrible. Uh, that's kind of little known and not very important. Um, they reference it in the Broly movie. I'm pr- they reference it in. In the series, gods, I'm pretty sure. I think they reference it in fucking before the tournament of power. They're like, Oh, Vegeta, why didn't you invite your brother or something like that? I swear to God, when they were about to go to the tournament of power, yeah, they say something like, Hey, Vegeta, don't you have a brother? And then he's like, Oh, he's off somewhere far in the galaxy, I can't reach him or something. That's I'll say not, this could- not that he would um, be any use at all. I think that it was stated that like. The fused Abo and Kado were as strong as like final form Frieza on Namek. And um and Tarble couldn't handle them even when they were unfused. Well, again, he wasn't like a fighter, like he just kind of yeah. like floated around space or whatever. And I mean he didn't train or anything. I'll say this because there's a lot of people saying that this is better than the Broly film, but there was no moment. 
in this film where I was literally levitating like I was when I was watching Broly. Like, mm-hmm. seriously, when Broly's going at Whis, like, I seriously transcended to another dimension when I was watching the Broly film. That I... was the hypish. Me and Joel were talking about that, too. Uh, like, on the way home from the theater. That moment where Broly goes after Whis was, like, the hypish shit. Like, the entire theater was like, oh, shit! Like, as soon as that happened. Because we've never seen Whis do anything besides, like, chop Beerus in the back of the neck. Like, legitimately, I was on my feet in the theater. Like, I literally left my seat when that was happening. And it's my funny, because w- Whis literally still didn't do anything but dodge, like, the entire time. My thing is, I need to go back and watch Broly again. But for me, like... I think it was probably like the Gohan and Krillin or go, excuse me, Gohan and Piccolo arc and just them and how they're like getting back. And it was like a throwback and a throwback to Dragon Ball. And I felt like this had elements of everything I've loved from Dragon Ball Z super um, that, you know, the animated films and stuff like that, where I think overall, I like the story a hair more. And I think it's fine to say that for myself. But I also need to be fair and go back and rewatch Broly again because I've only seen Broly once. Um, but I just really had a really good time with Dragon Ball Superhero. I think it was really good. I'm really excited to see what they do next with the series and whatever they do for another film because I think they're on a huge roll with these last two films. I, I gave them both the same score. They both have four and a half. That being said, There's no way in hell this is better than Dragon Ball Super Broly. Dragon Ball Super Broly had way better animation. The movie looks way fucking better. Dragon Ball Super Broly has a great story. Nobody fucking talks about it because most of the movie is a fight. But I'm sorry. Like, yeah, watching Piccolo go through and do all this stuff is good. You know, it's fun. And it was it was more slice of life, which I I love. But it's and I I love Piccolo. But, like, the exposition in Dragon Ball Super Broly, you know, like, the involvement of Frieza and, you know, that shit at the beginning, like, basically, like, kind of like the prequel part where it's, like, Goku, like, King Vegeta and Frieza and King Cold shows up and basically, you know, like, all that, like, Dragon Ball lore that they add in there is is just so good. And then, third, the fight. In Dragon Ball Super Broly is like the best fight in Dragon Ball history, basically. Fourth, the characters in Dragon Ball Super Broly are just more hype. Like, okay, Beast Gohan's cool. Orange Piccolo is cool. Cell Max is okay, I guess. All right. You're going to tell me that shit? Okay, who's the most hype character probably to the fandom in this movie? Is Beast Gohan, right? Am I Am I outlandish in saying that? No, probably not at all. Are you going to tell me? The Beast Gohan is more hype than Gogeta Blue? No. Not a I chance. Think, Not I think, a fucking chance. Are you going to tell me that Beast Gohan is even is even more hype than Broly? Broly being adapted into the actual storyline of Dragon no, Ball. No, I understand that it's a big... I think for me, it was just initial... Like, my review is based on initial reaction and how I just felt walking out of the theater. And I'm, I'm one to admit, I go back and watch series. I watch different things and in a year or in five months, six months, it could be completely different, but just like, I was a little more stoked going out of the theater and just what they did in the story. Probably because your, your friends were there this time. It's as opposed that, to you sitting by yourself with your fucking neck being snapped in half. Yeah. Cause <laughs> I, was, I was, I was watching it in the biggest, <laughs> it is bigger than IMAX, the screen that was for XD uh, He'll never let us live this down. No, that we I went won't. that we went to go see it at the fucking IMAX. Like IMAX the was great. It was it was great. Really cool, but no, IMAX is like three pixels higher resolution, though. That's fine. <laughs> the thing is, like, I'm not even talking about the one in my house. I went to one in Valley View. Like that's where I saw it, but I was too close. That was like a that was a detriment to the whole experience. But I want to see both of them again. I actually want to see both of them again soon. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is like I guess I kind of want to go. I, I kind of want to go see superhero uh subtitled. I also before it leaves the I, yeah, like I, I said, I, I've seen that. Broly in, in both languages, so I, I, I want to see this one as well, subtitled. I just think that they're like I gave them the same score, and I think they're both incredible movies to me as a Dragon Ball fan. 
Broly can't be beaten, especially by this. I maybe think the I gave next Broly movie. Five. Might, I think I gave the Broly next five stars. Maybe, maybe you did. Um, you know, like I don't know. People were like, "Oh, this movie was so funny." People downplay that Broly was like really fucking funny in like a lot of parts. Like Frieza was like fucking hilarious in Dragon Ball Super Broly. I remember like when he killed Paragus and then like was like Broly they yeah. killed your dad the entire theater was screaming laughing so fucking hard and just like and when Frieza was like oh I'm gonna get the Dragon Balls and they're like oh to become immortal and he's like no I'm over that and he's like I just want to grow like an inch or two taller not enough that people would notice but enough like but enough to like whatever and everybody was just laughing at that frieza was so good well Bulma fucking was good when fucking goku when he first encounters like the spaceship like in the ice and he's up on it he's just like breathing up against the glass oh all right. so fucking but funny fucking balma's balma's ass and all the ass shots of balma in this were next level let's not the fucking... funniest part in this movie was in that terrible car thing and it's just swerving all over and it's just the croc shots of the guy oh the crotch shot them like <laughs> humping while they're talking about like r- ruling the world there are so many moments i don't know I-, I think both of them are phenomenal uh i just i think that they're both i think that they're both great and even if the story like even if the narrative and this is slightly better. It's only slightly better. And okay, maybe you give the slight edge to this narrative wise. You cannot give the edge to this in animation, fights, or the fucking like hype ass characters or transformations that it introduces. The edge to that goes to Broly. So Broly wins in three out of four categories that I've just named. And including music, Broly had an entire like fucking like song right you remember this yeah go Gita, go broly like that shit was hard when that end credit song goes off it's called like blizzard or whatever like oh, this yeah. one like this one i can't remember like any of the music and we just saw it like because it ago. was all just a um like the entire thing was like a score they yeah. didn't have like any original like songs or anything made for it it was all just like kind of like scored like orchestral score well, in the crowd, the, it was cool. It worked, but just like you know, I don't. And like the crowd we saw it with, because I know the crowd I saw Broly with, like people were like screaming and like clapping and like going nuts. Like the people we were with, besides with the post credits, where our entire line of like our friends was like crying and clapping. Like the crowd, the whole, the like whole, as no, the, the whole theater, even though our theater wasn't full, but the whole theater at that last post credit scene, everybody was like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's been waiting for it for so long. Yeah, because it's been what four years, right? Technically, um... well, literally, Vegeta has beaten Goku in every fight, so I don't know why we were as shocked as we were. But <laughs> well, his, sec- his second win was a cheap shot. His first win was legit. Like, uh, but you know, his pride wouldn't accept it because at the end of the day, he ended up crawling away in like a fucking heap. But Goku and Vegeta in the Saiyan saga. Goku wins their little bean struggle or whatever. And then Vegeta says, okay, fuck this. Goes great ape and beats the living piss out of Goku. Like Goku doesn't stand a chance. He like literally crushes Goku in his hands, literally. And like, that's pretty much the end of Goku. He like forms a spirit bomb and I don't know. Vegeta tanks everything. Vegeta literally, like, he even takes out Great Ape Gohan by, like, the skin of his teeth. Like, basically, the only way you could say is that he lost is that, like, Krillin could have killed him, but Goku stopped him. Other than that, Vegeta stopped everything that they did. Or it wasn't for, it wasn't for Yajirobe, man. He was the fucking hero. Of the yeah, if, if it wasn't for Yajirobe, everybody would have been dead. <laughs> <laughs> Vegeta was just giving him all that work when he was in Great Ape. What do you think, Miles? Uh, uh, I think that uh, what are we doing? Closing thoughts? Is that what we're getting to? Uh, I, I need to go back and watch Broly, but uh, so I won't fully compare this, even though I've tried to in this, but 
walking out of theater. I really loved it. I liked it way more than I thought I was going to just based on the first trailer. I told you fucking guys, the movie was going to be good. I didn't think it was going to be bad. I told you saying, it was going to be good. I saw the fan. I, like, I saw the fan reaction when it first came out. And like every Dragon Ball fan, like the only thing they could say is like, I wish that it was hand drawn, but pretty much everyone else was like, this movie was a blast and everybody enjoyed it. I always, I always know that Dragon Ball is going to pull through. Like for me, like it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be good. I'm going to love it. I'm going to love what they do with the characters, especially like how good super was, how good Broly was like, uh, I really loved it. I'm really looking forward to what's next. I, I've really been waiting. I want to watch some more Dragon Ball Super anime soon. I hope they finish animating that, whether it doesn't matter if it's subbed or dubbed for me. Um, I did oh, it's, watch- it's week one sub for me. Well, I was going to say- it starts coming out weekly, I'm watching it like the day the episode comes well, out. Well, uh, update me, Jared. Let me know as soon as it happens because I will be on that because I watched all of Super Sub. You guys will know as soon as they drop like the reveal trailer for the next anime. Like it'll be in the Instagram chat. You know, I'll be in there. Goddamn, like when they announce the release date, I'll be like, all right, it's coming out on this day. You know, you know, I, I was on it for this movie. And believe it or not, I wasn't, like even a quarter as hyped for this movie as I was for Broly. Right. When Broly came out. Buddy, what'd you think? Any closing notes? What do you think about it? No, I mean, I think it's a top five Dragon Ball film for sure. Right. I don't know if I, it's because I definitely like Broly better. I don't know if I like Battle of Gods better. Like I think this and Battle of Gods are pretty much at the same level. So it's hard for me to like rank it. Um, But I definitely think it's like a top five Dragon Ball film for sure. If not top three. Well, Jared, you've been you've been helping fill in the lore and help fill in because like I don't I don't know the new manga and stuff. So well, it's not really relevant to the film. It isn't, but he's he's keeping us like grounded, letting us know the actual facts of what's going on in the Dragon Ball universe. We got a new Frieza transformation. Black you know that? I know. Frieza. <laughs> I know. Okay. So yeah, fill us in some final thoughts. What your final thoughts are? I mean, what's going on? I you know future all right I, I guess i'll just say you know like i've said a million times really love the movie really love the post credit scene but that that bumped it up from a four to like a four and a half um so it's like right up there neck and neck with broly um top five dragon ball film yeah yeah uh, i'd say personally probably it's probably like three or four um because i mean it'll be uh, either Dragon Ball Super Broly, Dragon Ball Z Broly. Like Dragon Ball Z Broly is still in my top five for sure. Yeah, I mean to to me, no question, Dragon Ball Super Broly is the best Dragon Ball film. Like I can't even like just like even taking because I love fucking Fusion Reborn, but like I can't I, I like I can't say that that's better than Broly. Like Broly is like for me like hands down. The I best. can't ob- I can't objectively say it's it's better than that but i'm then i would say dragon ball super broly is probably definitely the best dragon ball movie that's ever been made um and like i might put this above dragon ball z movie because just objectively it's a better movie but also i'm just such a huge fan of that first dragon ball z broly movie that it's always gonna have a special place in my heart objectively every dragon ball movie that's come out since battle of gods has been a better movie than dragon ball z broly but would I say that uh, Resurrection F is is that I like Resurrection F more than Dragon Ball Z Broly? Nice no. try. <laughs> no, no. I don't even think I like Battle of Gods better than Dragon Ball Z Broly. Um, but Battle of Gods is probably like number five on my top five. It'd probably go like... Number five? Yeah, because it would probably go... Or I guess it would be number four. Um, right, I'll give you that because for me it's either two or three. I'll give you it. Would probably be Dragon Ball Super Broly, Dragon Ball Super Superhero, and then Dragon Ball Z Broly Legendary Super Saiyan. And then it would probably be Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. And then it would probably be Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It, it feels weird for me to say that the two best Dragon Ball movies of all time are Dragon Ball Super movies. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's why i'm not i have no idea where to rank any of it like i have no idea like 
because I like certain ones for certain things and I'm in certain moods for certain things. And you're going to tell me, and I know it's true, but like basically like I love Bardock and history of trunks. I know they can't compete with something on a cinematic level. Those aren't movies like the, though. They're that's TV, what I, they're both TV specials. I know, I know. But in, in my mind, because the way I watch them, I understand they are TV specials, but uh, it's just hard. Both of those, if, if it's going to be something that's outside of the series, any Dragon Ball series, History of Trunks and Bardock are both going to be up there because they were like, like my peak fandom. And I actually love both of the stories that are represented in that. But obviously I can't compare them to something to even like Battle of the Gods or something that was theatrical, obviously superheroes, you know, Broly, anything like that. So if those were movies, I would probably have them in my top five. Because okay, those, cool. All right. All right. Cool those are, I just, they're just not even, they're just not movies. So I don't even consider them when I'm talking about Dragon Ball movies. But right. if, if they were movies, then without a doubt, those are, if they were movies, those would be like two of the best Dragon Ball movies ever. And okay. I, okay. And yeah. I would have <laughs> to even objectively probably put them over Dragon Ball Z Broly because just of how well they're made. Really? I mean, like objective, Dude, objectively, yes. So objectively, good. yes. But like fan wise, maybe not. Like personally wise, but objectively, they're be- they-, they would be better. And I'm gonna have to pretty- rewatch History of Trunks because I remember thinking it was overrated when I saw oh, it. I love no, it. But History the- of Trunks rips. Yeah, but it's the- so good. Oh, but I, 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 I fucking love the Bardock special. I mean, every- Bardock, I have special. About Bardock so special nice, yeah. rules. Bardock special uh, rules. History of Trunks rules. I love both of those. But I mean, can we all just agree? Peak Dragon Ball is the Dragon Ball Z driving episode. The driver's license. No, like 100 percent, 100 percent. I love that episode. Which I they love, reference I, in this. They, film, I love that they referenced it in this movie when Piccolo's driving the plane, and he said, "I never got my license." Yeah, so good. Too good. Uh, well, I I think that like that kind of sums up everything I I think I have to say about. It. I loved it, and I'm really looking forward to what comes next for the whole series. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast where we just continually sucked off the new <laughs> Dragon Ball Super superhero film. It, it's it's a great movie and if you're any form of fan of dragon ball or even if you're not a fan of dragon ball you could go check it out Maisie, our our wives came and saw it and they both enjoyed it even with a limited dragon ball knowledge it's just a very fun story and a very fun movie i won't say that my wife has limited dragon ball knowledge at this point i'd say she's at the intermediate level to be fair to my wife for a second you could say your wife has amateur knowledge if you want I bet my, you my wife, wife might even my have wife, more she than your wife because she's been watching Dragon Ball with me. <laughs> all right, they're probably all right, the all right. This might be she's another a, podcast. She's That's like her. at she's at the second world tournament arc with me right now. So I mean, yeah. I don't know. Miles, I have one final question for you because this was a big discussion in the car ride home. Okay, how handsome was Broly in the film? He's he's very good looking, to be honest. Yeah, Joel was very. Joel was ready to fuck this man. Like <laughs> Joel, Joel was ready to lose it all for Broly. Well, yeah, I mean, between Vegeta and Broly, Joel would probably definitely lose, lose it all. I mean, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts. If I lose it all. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna uh, Attack on Titan season three or final season part three, buddy. I like I'm I'm gonna cry. Like I already know. I wish they were doing it as a film, but I'm very excited. When when does it drop? January or like late December. That's so long. Well, oh, Miles, gear up because I'm telling you this right now. If you're gonna be on this podcast, we're talking about Attack on Titan every single fucking week when it's coming out. So <sighs> all right, let me see if I can. Well, do you can it. watch it with us because me and Emily are re- re- gonna rewatch it before it comes out. All right, so. we'll figure it out. All right. Thank you guys for for doing this as always. I mean, I know I'm part of it, but still. But Midnight Miles is going to sign off. Will we have off. a Will we have a podcast next week? I'm uh, telling you guys this right uh, now. I already have it booked out that we have four episodes coming out in October, so we're at least doing four in October. Well, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna figure that out. We're gonna figure it out soon. So, Dragon Ball Z superhero superhero rips. Uh, <laughs> I just want to there was no Z involved. The fuck did he just say? He said See, Dragon Ball Z superhero superhero super, super mega super 
Dragon Ball Fighters rips. GT Final Bout rips. Uh, no, it does not. The game, <laughs> the game is horrible. The game is so bad. All right, I'm signing out. We got it. All right. Love Marty the Bruiser signing out. Dynamite Jared, make sure you uh, stay tuned for more Brain Damage podcast coming your way and weekly reviews of the new Rurouni Kenshin anime whenever that drops. <laughs>